My name's Kevin Steed. Subscribe to Hill Steven on YouTube.com or I'll come to your house and ruin your life. Hey guys, what is up? It is I, your boy, Heel, back at it again with a new video. Thank you all for tuning into this video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up and share this video throughout your entire social media platforms. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. You can follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven, where I tweet throughout Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT, Impact, and pay-per-views as well. Before I get into the SmackDown Live review, I want to give a big thank you to the big homie himself, Salarex Gaming. For the awesome layout that you see in the video if you are a youtuber or a podcaster and you want awesome graphics layouts or logos done for your youtube channel or your own podcast hit up salrex gaming on twitter at salrex gaming i have a link to his twitter down below in the description box give him a follow hit him up he does amazing amazing designs not just for myself but for okay fabe that ass podcast Joe Cronin and Saw Monster Sounds Up, just to name a few. All right, let's get into this SmackDown Live review. SmackDown Live for September 26, 2017. I gotta be honest with you guys. I thought SmackDown Live tonight was a bland show with a very, very good main event. If anything, I'll tell you all, just watch the main event and that's it. But as always, I wanna hear your thoughts down below in the comment threads. If you enjoy SmackDown Live or not, let me know. Or if not on Twitter, at Heel Steven. I'll give you guys a retweet and a like and what have you. So the show kicked off with Kevin Owens talking about how a couple weeks ago he headbutted Vince McMahon. And how based on what happened, Shane O'Mac called Kevin Owens a coward. Especially because Kevin Owens wasn't even on SmackDown Live last week. He was via satellite. And now Kevin Owens is in the building, but there's no Shane McMahon. And out comes, and think about this too, right? He talked about how how Shane's the real coward here, and how he actually respects and likes Vince McMahon. So think about what he did to someone that he likes and respect, and think about what he would do to someone that he doesn't. And out comes Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn literally tells Kevin Nolan that, hey, you know what, I'm here because I know that you, you're not there right now. What's going on with you? You snapped. And he just doesn't like where things are going for Kevin Owens, pretty much, right? And then Kevin Owens goes into pure savage mode on Sami Zayn, talking about how Sami Zayn has been WWE longer than Kevin Owens. But Kevin Owens has done more than Sami Zayn as comes to accomplishments. Former Universal Champion, multiple-time U.S. Champion, multiple-time Intercontinental Champion. He's had these big profile matches, while Sami Zayn has just been doing shit on the main roster. And even Sami Zayn admitted that it's true, but he knows that his time will come and when it does come, he's going to do it the right way and not cheat and cut corners and stab people in the back like Kevin Owens. Now, I'll be very honest. When the Superstar Shake-Up took place, when Sami Zayn went to SmackDown Live, a lot of people had the belief that, hey, they were actually going to do something with Sami Zayn. And it seemed like they were at first because they did have him in those big profile matches early on. But then now it's just like, boom, whatever. You're just dead on the show. You're losing the aid in English every single week. You did a job to fucking Mike, you know, Mike Kanellis. And just now, whatever, if, if you will. It's kind of sad, but hey, you know, things happen, I guess, right? And then out comes Daniel Bryan to inform you know, Kevin Owens that Shane isn't there. But he will be here tonight in the building. But if you want someone to fight, there's someone that really wants to fight Kevin Owens. And he's right there in front of you, not being Sami Zayn. So that's the main event tonight. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. So when they really say that they're meant to do this shit forever, they fucking mean it. Holy crap, right? <laughs> and then we had the first match of the, of the night. We had Ty Dillinger versus Baron Corbin. AJ Styles was on commentary for this. And the match was just there for what it was. Um, it seemed like Dillinger was going to have the momentum at first because he kind of did. And then... Baron Corbin just tossed Ty Dillinger into AJ Styles and got the countout win. And again, in a shit way, because I'll be honest, I'm not big on these countout wins, what have you. And after all this, Baron Corbin challenges AJ Styles for the US title at Hell in a Cell. So we're getting the match. I'll be honest, I would prefer to see a three-way because at least you give Ty Dillinger something to do, even if he eats the pinfall to submission. At the same time, again, you just give this guy something to do. It's just like with the club, you know, and how at No Mercy, they weren't even involved in the tag team title match, but they were involved in that program with, you know, Ambrose and Rollins and The Bar. 
in this case as well, you know, Ty Dillinger has been involved and you're not doing nothing with him at the pay-per-view. The last thing I want to see is him be in the fucking pre-show, but that's just my honest opinion, of course, right? But after all of this, we get Jinder Mahal, the WWE champion with the Singh Bros, and they're pretty much talking about the good things about Shinsuke Nakamura, and they put the pictures up to laugh, what have you, just like last week, where people were like, oh, it's too far, it's too far now, you've gone too far, and shit, shut the fuck up, people, seriously, like, all you fucks out there that were so fucking offended, do me a fucking favor, all right, make sure that your friends or your loved ones never fucking take you to a fucking comedy club, pulling up all these pictures, and there's one picture that starts moving around and shit, right, it is Shinsuke Nakamura, and people go crazy, out comes Shinsuke, he takes out both the Singh bros, Jinder gets some momentum to try to attack Shinsuke Nakamura, but then Shinsuke hits the Kinshasa to clear out the ring, and there you go, I'll be honest, I am not digging this feud, I feel like it just took a nosedive, and it has more to do, I feel like, with Jinder Mahal, here's the thing about it too, Jinder Mahal, he's not a bad wrestler, he's just a bad, terrible WWE champion, and I understand the situation, hey, they really wanted to put this in the market you know they want to get it out there what have you and unfortunately it just really hasn't paid off it's just more like okay now you're just there and i'll be honest people are saying that they want to see gender lose the championship in hell in a cell which i think should happen i think shinsuke should leave hell in a cell as the wwe champion but i don't think it's gonna happen i think in some way shape or form in some capacity gender my balls will retain the wwe championship god forbid but fuck the way this is going don't be surprised. Then we had the Hype Bros versus the Usos. The match was short. It ends after Zack Ryder's on the middle turnbuckle. Mojo does the blind tag without Zack fucking knowing they're arguing, which then leads the Usos to hit the fucking frog splash on Mojo Rawley for the 1-2-3. New Day comes out and they challenge the Usos for the SmackDown tag team title. Keep this in mind, they're the tag team champions, right? But they want to do this match inside the Hell in a Cell. I'll be very honest, okay? At first, I wasn't digging the idea of them being inside the cell but at the same time we think about the tag team division as a whole one of the big rivalries were the uso versus the new day so why the fuck not i'll take it i think it could very very well steal the show in my honest opinion because again they've had amazing matches before so i don't see why not here then we had aiden english out there dressed up as a fucking butler imagine home alone 2's lost in new york one of the guys that worked in the hotel just imagine that, right? And you have him singing the national anthem of Bulgaria, and he hypes up Rusev because apparently it's the Rusev Pride Day, what have you. The Pride of Bulgaria ceremony, there you go. And they had the mayor of Bulgaria come out to announce that this day, September 26, 2017, is forever known as Rusev Day. And Aiden English sings the song. They give Rusev the keys of, I guess, Bulgaria, what have you. And then Randy Orton comes out, does the RKO to Aiden English out of nowhere, and then the RKO to Rusev. And there you go. Again, they're hyping this up. I'm assuming that Hell in a Cell to do a match, but I don't know. Honestly, I, this should not take place inside the cell. Backstage, we had Daniel Bryan on his phone thanking somebody for the update when Sami Zayn rolls up. And Sami said that he wanted to see him, and Bryan informs him it was Shane, and who was going to be there soon. And he's probably going to come after Kevin Owens. And then Zayn asked Daniel to call him back and ask McMahon to not get involved in, the, in their match. And Brian said that he'll try. And Zemi talks about how important the match is to him. The match with Kevin Owens, that is, in the main event. Since he won't have the opportunity at Hell in a Cell. Daniel Bryan says, hey, listen, tonight, Kevin Owens is his, pretty much. And again, it's kind of sad, like I was saying earlier, how they're not doing anything with Sami Zayn. And he's just there now, Uber driver, even though at times I joke around like, yeah, he's fucking Uber driver and shit. But at the same time, you know, the guy can, you know, it's a good wrestler, all the fuck you want. There's a shame they're not doing shit with him. And then we had Carmelo versus Charlotte Flair. The match for what it was was just a short match. Uh, they had fucking James Ellsworth tied in a fucking leash. The match ends with Charlotte Flair hit the fucking big boot on fucking Carmella. So, like, she's now, like, the female big cat. Like, ironically, right? Carmella loses to the move that her fucking boyfriend does. The fucking big boot of Cass. This is the Cass, son. This is the Cass. After this, Natalia comes out to congratulate Charlotte. And she's happy that Charlotte's dad, Ric Flair, is back and healthy because 
she wants Ric Flair to see his overrated daughter lose to Natalia at Hell in a Cell. And there we go with that. Um, listen, it's another match in the saga of Charlotte versus Natalia, the Hart versus the Flares. So there you go with that. We had Dolph Ziggler dressed up as the Undertaker, and people weren't even buying it. Like, yeah, we knew it was fucking Dolph. And he talked about how, again, you know, these entrances and zombies and shit like that, how people just don't care. Then out comes Bobby Roode, people going crazy, because finally Bobby Roode's come out. You knew it was going to happen. You knew Bobby Roode was going to come out, and he finally did. And he challenges Dolph Ziggler to a match at Hell in a Cell. With two weeks of build, listen, let's see where this goes. This could probably open the show at Hell in a Cell, but why not? I'm all for it. Orius versus Ziggler, why the fuck not? And then we had the main event, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. The match for what it was, a very, very good back and forth match. The match kicked off right away with fucking punches. Imagine Don Fry and Takayama from Pride back in the day. Just punching the fuck out of each other back and forth. Again, just back and forth action here. Zayn hits the blue thunder bomb. There's a super kick by Kevin Owens. Zayn goes for his DDT outside the ring through the fucking you know, middle of the turnbuckles, what have you. And he gets super kicked. And then there's the power bomb on the apron by Kevin Owens. So they stop the match. Kevin Owens by KO, if you will. And then Kevin Owens is sitting there with this look on his face like he's in shock for what he did. And you have the doctors checking up on Sami Zayn. They're taking him out of the arena, if you will. And then Kevin Owens literally runs after Sami Zayn. He literally tackles the doctor, the medical staff, down to the floor. He grabs a steel chair and he puts it around Sami's neck. Shane comes out. And Shane, as he's coming there to confront Kevin Owens, Owen tosses Zayn, who has the chair around his neck, onto Shane. So it kind of hits Sami Zayn as well, the chair that is around his neck. And then Kevin just does the escape. And that's how they close SmackDown Live. Again, a good main event. I look forward to seeing Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon at the Hell in a Cell. Other than that, that was SmackDown Live. If anything, just watch the main event. The rest was just bland as shit. But again, guys, give me your thoughts down below in the comment threads of this video. If you enjoy SmackDown Live or not, follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Make sure to like all my videos. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, it's I, your boy, Heel. And remember, it's wrestling and whatever.